Hi, I just wanted to introduce you to Conor O'Leary, a professional surfer from Australia, who is someone I've worked with over many years and he's been highly successful on the world tour. Just want to talk to Conor about um, the, his developmental experiences, um, early years of his surfing and, and the skills that he had to learn, the foundation skills he had to learn to become the surfer that he is today. I just wanted to ask you a few questions about your experiences. You know, I, you're, you're a surfer of, of international success uh, yep. at, the, at the highest levels, and um, but that just, that didn't happen overnight. You know, that there was a process involved in that. Um, you know, and it really started. It really started right from the start. Maybe from you know um, when when you became um, looking for advice. I remember you coming in and doing that the first couple of sessions when you're about 11 or 12 years of age. Mm. Um, do, do you remember, do you remember that early development work? Do you remember what, what we did together or? Yeah. What? So, so vividly. I mean, well, I guess you've, you've had that experience with, with my mom, you know, coaching her over the, you know, when she was, you know, doing, doing her thing. And I guess it came to a time where uh, I was at that level where, you know, I needed, you know, expertise advice you know to to help my you know career and hope make make myself become better at, at surfing and we came to you and uh the first thing you know I, I could i was probably how old was i was about 12 11 or 12 and i could surf okay but the first thing i remember the very first thing you like we had a surf and i came in and the very first thing that we worked on that you t- you touched on was Hey, you're not jumping to your feet, and that's why you know you're you're late to some sections, and you know you're not getting into the wave early enough, kind of thing. And because I was doing that kind of three step stand up, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like, okay, you're the next session. You're not sur- you're you're only allowed to progress like surf the wave if you jump to your feet. And I feel like that was the most valuable advice that I've ever had because if I, you know, if <laughs> If I didn't fix that there and then, you know, it wouldn't have helped me, you know, progress at all because I feel like jumping to your feet is such a valuable thing in surfing in the sense of, you know, the quicker you get to your feet, the more time you have to, you know, read the wave and and then, you know, set up the wave to, you know, the best that it has on offer. And, yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. I still remember the first couple of times I was jumping my feet and falling off and going, this, is, this sucks. I could, like, I'm not, I can't do it. And then it's funny looking back now that I'm doing it now. And it, I mean, if, if I wasn't, didn't get pulled up from it earlier, you know, there and then I, I reckon it would have, you know, crawled me for the rest of my surfing career. Well, <laughs> so, without, without, doubt, without doubt, you know, like, you know, like you wouldn't have been taking off at 10 foot Fiji cloud breaks and, and pulling no straight. No, no, just, like you just wouldn't, you wouldn't have been able to do that. Imagine, yeah, trying to trying to get under a an eight foot slab at Chopes, trying to do the one, two, three step. You you'd have no chance. <laughs> yeah. But you yeah, know, you're, the, you're not the only one. You know, Lane Beachley, the world, world seven times world champion, she had that problem where she had like a, she climbed what I, I call it climbing to the to your feet. Yeah, she, she climbed to the feet and she worked on it. She overcame it. it, and it's a major problem for a lot of. A lot of surfers. Huge. I mean, my. I mean, Rick's. Rick, we're actually going through the same thing with with my little brother at the moment. We're like, he's doing the same thing, like the the climbing up the board, and we're like, you got to jump to your feet. You know, your 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 world will change when you jump to your feet, kind of thing. So it's <laughs> uh, it's funny because I always tell Rick, I'm like, you know, that this is what I was going through when I was young too. You're not, you know, you're not alone, kind of thing. So yeah, you know, and, and look at me now. I'm jumping to my feet. And, you know, it's yeah, it's <laughs> definitely the the most valuable thing that I've taken away from, you know, from coaching with you, it's, you know, jumped on feet and you, you know, your, your eyes, your eyes definitely um, open a lot more. <laughs> yeah. You know, there, there was, there was that part of the, the training early on, but then, you know, then also we worked on, you know, your bottom turns and your speed creation and, mm. and your, um, you know, your, your lifting the arms up and there's, there's numerous parts of this. And obviously as you get, as you got, all those foundation things well, um, got them under control. There was the things like, you know, your your aerials and your fin busts and your recentering and difficult finishes and 
you know, of all those things, you know, what, um, you know, did you find any, any more difficult to, to incorporate in your surfing or some things came easy? What was, what was it like for you um, developing those skills, you know, those foundation skills and then the more difficult skills mm -hmm. later on? I guess it's, I think the, the hardest thing I found, but I mean, it was hard, but it was a good thing because, I mean, doing the airs is, is probably the hardest, was the hardest, hardest thing to, to kind of nail yeah. in a sense of, you know, it's just lots of repetition and, you know, you're going to have surfs where you try 20 and you don't make 20 and you're frustrated and, you know, and then you're going to go out and, you know, do 10 and you're going to make all 10. It's just a matter of, you know, how you're feeling and just trying to, I guess, whenever you do start getting frustrated, just kind of think about what, you know, you've been told and what, you know, we've talked about and um, just various things about that. But probably, the, yeah, the airs was probably the, the trickiest but i mean it's still really fun like just being able to try airs and put myself in you know different situations like that is it was always really fun but i feel like the the airs definitely took a lot a lot longer than a lot of the other the steps but i mean i mean after trying to pop up it was like i feel like going to the bottom was a very uh new thing for me um yep. like you know a bottom turn is such a is probably the most crucial turn in surfing. I mean, if you don't have a bottom turn, you can't do any, you can't do anything. So yeah. it's kind of like, it's funny how when, I, when you're a kid, you're so focused on, you know, quality over quantity. And after, you know, we got over the hurdle of jumping to my feet, it was kind of like, okay, you know, you got to go to the bottom of the wave. And then once you're at the bottom, you know, you, you've got a whole face to work with, you know, and that's just a matter of, and then once you're at the bottom, then it's a matter of, you know, what turn to pick, you know, in, in what, what sections in front of you. And um, I feel like the bottom turn was probably one of the funnest just because once you got it nailed, it was like far out. You can go to the bottom and then you look to the lip and you're like, okay, now what am I going to do here? Kind of thing. You got all this time and you got all this extra speed and drive. And, um, and then, yeah, I guess it set you up, sets you up for the rest of the way, which is, which is really, really crucial. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, you, you briefly talked and spoke about aerials, and and the people that we're we're working on in, on in Surf Six are, um, are more working on the you know the pop ups and the bottom turns and the cutbacks and things. You know, the reality is that the the aerials are actually made up of those fun, fun, fundamental things. You know, like you need to create speed. You need to have a good. Um, um, you need to bend your body to to get a good launch off the top. You need to be able to recenter. Um, on landing in a really effective way, you know, like that really low chest over front knee position, and they're all the things you learn when you when you're learning how to do bottom turns and cutbacks and finishes, mm. and you know. And so if you if you can get them right there, well then then you you can you've got a potential at some point to do aerials. You know, you exactly. Know. Yeah. I mean, you've you've got to have a good you've got to have a base. If you don't have a base, like you see so many people who, you know, all the, the young got young kids these days who are just kind of so focused on, you know, doing airs and doing all the radical stuff. But in hindsight, doing all the basic stuff first sets you up to then be able to progress in a successful way with doing airs and, you know, knowing what to do when you are in one of those situations. And um, I feel like, yeah, I feel like you, you, do, you do definitely need the base in order to, to move forward in, in surfing. And, yeah, that is like likes of doing a bottom turn and, you know, the cutbacks and how, throwing your arms to, you know, create speed. And, I mean, I'm, I'm still reminding myself those those basic things every day. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how many times I had to remind you about throwing your arms to create speed. Hey, you still do. <laughs> you still do. I still always, like, even today, just, this morning in the surf, I... Uh, I had a wave and I, uh, I was on my back end and I couldn't, I kind of got a bit stuck and I flicked off and I was like, okay, the next one, I need to remember to throw my arms in my back end because, you know, that's the way to create speed. And I feel like throwing your arms in your back end is definitely a little bit harder than throwing your arms on your forehand because, you know, it's a little bit more awkward, but it's definitely one that works. And yeah, like I said, still remind, remind, remind myself every day, every surf. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, just just on that, you know, like you, you're talking about how you keep focus. How, how, are there any strategies, or or are there any 
techniques that you use to keep your mind on the job? When, like, when you're working on your surfing, are there things that you do on the beach or when you after a wave when you're paddling back out? Are, are there things that help you maintain your focus on the task that you're trying to work on? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of a. It depend. I guess it depends on the conditions. If it's you know, if if the wind's blowing south, or you know, or if it's it's blowing into the lefts, and I'm like, okay, this is a this is a good day to to try and try airs, and you know, because the board board's gonna stick under my feet with the wind, and you know, I'm gonna have a lot more repetition and and all that. But I guess just in a specific everyday surf, it's just kind of trying to adapt to whatever you you did after after a wave. Like I said before this morning, I took off on a wave and should have thrown my arms and I flicked off and I was like, okay, for the next one, if I'm in that same situation, throw my arms kind of thing. So it's kind of, I guess it's just constantly reminding myself on things that I did wrong on the previous wave to then, you know, focus on the next one and try and nail, nail it on the next one. So... Oh. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, you know, like the thing is that you do know you've, you've done a lot of training over the years and you can self-evaluate what's going on because you, because you're fully aware of your movements and your body movements and stuff, you know. In, in, in the program that we're offering people worldwide, we talk about, you know, six waves, go out and work on a, mm. a six waves. Do you think that would be an effective way of keeping focused? 100%, even if you just did it in like, yeah, like I said, six waves or you had a... 20 minute block you know i've I've been doing a a bunch of like i mean for myself like heat drills with but only doing 15 minute heats just to kind of keep the intensity up in that 15 minutes instead of doing a whole 30 and then maybe at the last 30 minutes of my session then i'll do a 30 minute heat just to finish it off but i feel like yeah when you're trying to progress and try and get better i guess yeah like i said six waves or you know six or six or eight waves and then you know then do something else so because I feel like if you do one thing for the whole surf, you end up losing focus. You end up, you know, getting frustrated because you're making mistakes and, or, you know, you. so I guess changing it up a couple of times in each surf is always, or, you know, it keeps, keeps it interesting. I feel like for myself anyway, it keeps, keeps myself on, on task and, you know, focus for the whole surf instead of having one task for the whole surf and then going, Oh, you know, by the end I'm getting a bit frustrated. I'm a bit tired. So yeah. Okay, you know, well, okay, well, it's great. You know, obviously, you've, you've worked through this, you've worked through your frustrations, you know, it's, 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 it's a difficult, yeah, it's always, always it's difficult to, to always stay positive with what's going on, you know, but um, mm. um, obviously, you've learned how to do that and, and, and some of those techniques work really well. Hey, listen, thanks very much for your time, Connor. I really appreciate it and, and, um, and I know that some of the comments today will help other people work through those frustrations, understand that the people like yourself and, you know, world champions, they all start somewhere. They all start, to, they all start. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that um, skills can be improved just because you're serving at a certain level now doesn't mean that you have to be at that level all of your surfing mm. days, yeah? Yeah, it's funny. Like, a lot of people look at, you know, myself and, you know, guys that are in that elite stage and they go, they kind of look at us like, oh, you guys must have been, you know, talented from the very start. Like, you know, you, you must have had a talent from the start. And it's like, no, nah, well, I couldn't even jump to my feet when I was a kid. Like, and that's that's where I started kind of thing. So um, it's good to kind of – it, this will be good to kind of let, you know, the, the people that do want to learn and are at that, you know, beginner intermediate level that just want to get better to give them motivation to go, okay, well, you know, if – Connor O'Leary was, you know, not being able to jump to his feet when he was a grom and now he can surf the way he is, then, yeah, I get, you know, that's, that's epic and that'll hopefully give motivation to, to everyone to keep, you know, moving forward and keep learning and hopefully succeed and become a really good surfer down the other track. Great. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time, Connor. No I really appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Okay.